Today's video is going to fall under the Fair Use Act. We're going to be taking a look at a video from the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission's channel on YouTube. The video is titled Rose Creek WMA Mausoleum. And it's we're going to take a look at this for scientific research and for criticism purposes. So, a little quick backstory. They're going to be talking about... Um, there is a Creek Bank tomb near Fairbury, Nebraska that has a bunch of roses uh, growing up and down the creek, and that's why the state named it Rose Creek. Um, now, they claim that the town of Fairbury, the founder, J.D. McDowell, they claim that his son, Nelson, made this thing in nine years by himself. For himself and his neighbor, Cliff Hunter, to be buried in. Uh, let's just press play and uh, see what happens here. Ah, volume. Properties, you're going to run into an occasional curiosity or oddity. Arbor Lodge has a single lane of bowling in its basement. Out West, Lake Minotaur has a replica lighthouse. Stagecoach Lake near Hickman has a small cemetery. But did you know there's the unique feature of a... You can already see faces. Who's with me? Does anyone see it? Right in the center of the screen, you see that big eye, nose, mouth? A mausoleum at the Rose Creek Wildlife Management Area near Fairbury. It's a popular public area for upland game and bird hunting, and many a hunter's. <sighs> yeah, many a hunter's. They've shot the crap out of it. If you look right above the arch, it says mausoleum. So one of the red flags for me. Is this guy supposedly spent nine years carving this thing? Um, and then they go to say that he uh, hired out the final touches to have a mausoleum carved. No. For one, I'm a man that works with my hands. I build stuff. I'm not letting anybody finish what I started, especially if it's something like that. I don't care if that carving takes me another nine years. Nobody's finishing it but me. Um, you know, there's just, there's, there's so many holes in the backstory. I can't find a photo of him online at all. You'll see here in a minute or two, um, he's got, he's got just a tiny basic headstone. It, it just doesn't even make sense. Um, the fact that they call his neighbor Cliff Hunter. I mean, it's like they're hiding this thing, but they want it found. They want somebody to say, you're full of it, man. It's probably been surprised to stumble across this large two-room tomb. Nelson McDowell is a wealthy Fairbury bachelor who spent nearly a decade of his life carving out the sandstone mausoleum with a hammer and chisel. And that's false because I've been there, I've felt the walls, I've filmed them, you can watch the videos and see. There's no way that was done with a hammer and chisel. There's just no way. It's too smooth. His intent was to be buried there one day. September 27, 1937, McDowell died at the age of 80 in a vehicle train accident. He was buried in... Vehicle train accident. They also, in their backstory, go to say, yes, he died in a vehicle train accident. Okay, well, the train engineer didn't see it, and the driver of the car does not remember any details. So it's almost like, what the heck did this guy know? He found something. Was he old? old age and he was getting ready to say say what it really was tell everybody everything that he found inside of it I don't know 
<laughs> I don't know, but nobody nobody will know because he's gone, and I believe his neighbor never existed. I'm I don't I don't even think this guy existed. Did this guy even exist? Like, I gotta find out. I gotta private investigate this crap. I gotta find out. I want answers. The Fairbury Cemetery, because the law at the time prevented his burial in the mausoleum, he... Of course it's gonna prevent the burial. It's pretty well known. You can't just bury people wherever you feel like it. You can't just make something and bury them. I mean, you can't, you can't even... You're not even supposed to do that with your dogs. I mean, come on. It created... So it remains as a curiosity and an occasional shelter for wildlife. Access involves a rugged search and hike. A rugged search and hike? No, it doesn't. You get out of your car and you walk for about four or five minutes. I think you have to go over a log and under one, and it's a little sloped, but it's not. They may, it's, so they tell you about it, and then they kind of warn you, I wouldn't go. It's pretty slippery. Hike with a stretch of steep, slippery slope. What a load of crap. You know, for me, this whole story is just full of holes and holes and holes. Um, you, you know, you dig into it and they say, you know, have you ever heard or seen what a train does to a car? First, like the story says that the car just all of a sudden darted out in front of the train. And Nelson was killed, but the driver wasn't, and he doesn't remember anything. But they also go as far to say that when they found him, he was cheerful and ruddy looking. Upright, cheerful and ruddy looking. And looked like a man in his 50s rather than his 80s. Have you, like I said, have you ever seen a car train accident? Can you imagine getting hit hard enough by a train to die while you're in a car, but you're still upright, cheerful, and ruddy looking? That's like red flag number seven. Archaeologists have been there. But it's on state land now. It's all state land. It's all owned by the state. You can hunt and fish there and trap. But you can't metal detect. You can't dig. You can't do any of that. And if you'll notice... All the states seem to do this. All the really important places seem to be state or federal land where you're not permitted to dig and look. And I think they want it that way. So the next step, I guess, is I gotta go I got to get online and I got to look at the county's records. I need to find out where this man lived. And I need to look at all of his neighbors. And I need to look into Cliff Hunter and find out if they were actually people or not. Because if they were, there'll be a record. So I don't know. You know, there's a lot of holes in it. I think it's crap. There's faces in, this, in the in the stuff um it's too smooth one man nine years and and you know they go to say that the reason he did it was because the doctor told him he needed to have an active life uh because he had tuberculosis and so at the age of 55 he started carving this thing and it took him nine years and then he finally died in a car train accident at the age of 80. It just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. You know why? Because it's not true. 
I mean, what do y'all think? You've heard the story. You've seen the footage. You've seen the stuff. You've seen what the state says about it. What do you think? Did Nelson McDowell carve that thing by himself for him and his neighbor, Cliff Hunter, to be buried in? Or is that an indigenous tomb? Two-room, dome ceiling tomb? I do know one thing. I'm going to go back as many times as I have to to figure out who made this and what the heck this place is. Until next time, this is Creekstain. We'll see you later.